Good morning. This is Larry Edelson with my Uncommon Wisdom weekly video market update for Thursday, April 7th. This has certainly been a very exciting week and there's been a lot of action in the markets. I've also been on my blog communicating with several followers who have been watching my work and following me because this has been such a very critical time for many markets. So I wanted everybody to stay fully in tune with what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm seeing in the markets and in my models, and to follow me as we navigate through what appear to be very easy markets to trade and follow from a trend point of view, but are actually wrought with all kinds of high risk situations. And you all know at this point what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the precious metals. I'm talking about in particular gold and silver where there's no question that lately for the past few months I've basically been dead wrong on what's been happening there. Now I do want to back up a little bit and I do want to caution everybody that what's happening right now in gold and silver are really only short-term moves. They are not the big picture. The big picture remains intact, which is a bull market that will last for several more years and go much, much higher. We're talking at least to 5,000 in gold by 2015, latest 2016, and now over $100, probably $125 silver by that same time period. So, while I've been wrong in the short term, I'm not unhappy with myself. I am certainly unhappy if it's caused any subscribers, especially new subscribers, some frustration lately. Uh, but I have played these markets according to my systems, which have never let me down on the intermediate term and long term. I simply felt that the cycles were pointing lower on the short term, that gold had come too far and silver had gone too far to the upside to be aggressively adding or buying new positions. So I kept our powder dry as I wished to do for myself. I always do for subscribers what I do in my own portfolio. Now, Gold, over the last few months, really hasn't gone anywhere. It peaked originally in December of last year at about 1433. It swooned down to 1308, came back to 1433, bounced around between 1410 and 1450 for a few weeks, and now it is starting to break out to the upside. So let's go right to the gold chart there. And I want to show you what exactly I'm looking at, why I still maintain caution needs to be exercised here. Here's the gold chart here. As you can see, and as you already know, we started to close above that 1453 critical resistance level. That is a positive for gold going forward. We have some chart resistance from this horizontal line here from the tops going back in November, early December, uh, uh, late December, then we fell to 1308, then the first high back here in March, another high here in, in late March, and we had some technical res resistance there. I am personally, uh, and for my followers and subscribers, going to wait until that resistance is taken out, about 1463 take a look for a pullback there, or if it doesn't look like a pullback is going to happen, jump right on board and add some positions here. Either way, whether we get a short-term pullback after breaking through this resistance level or we don't, gold is probably now headed up to 1700 or 1800 possibly even 2000 or 2100 by June of this year. It will not be a straight-up affair. It will be a wild and woolly affair. I would have preferred, as I've said all along, that gold do get the gold correct and not take off to the upside going into June. That would have been healthier on a longer term point of view, and it would have made for a much more orderly bull market going forward. 
That is not to be the case, however. Instead, gold is likely now to continue higher into June, correct probably very sharply in the summer, and then take off yet again much higher. So having said that, I want you to please stay tuned. I'm going to be sending out some alerts in the next few days, no doubt, instructing my paying subscribers to my Real Wealth Report and my higher level trading services exactly what to do. And for my Uncommon Wisdom followers, I will try to get out a special alert as quickly as possible. And I will also be on my blog there for you to pose questions and for me to answer. I'll try to get to every single one. Uh, that's uh, often uh, not possible due to time constraints, but I am keeping my eye on the blog so that I can keep you fully posted on what's happening in these markets. Now, let's go to silver. I still do not like silver one bit at all. However, okay, as you can see from this chart in here, silver is now making a decisive thrust to pierce through a formation that could be extremely bullish going forward. That formation and that resistance level now lies at 41 to 42. I expect silver to get up to about $42 an ounce. That is where the real fate of silver will be determined over the next few days and the next couple of weeks. If silver closes above $42 an ounce, it can go even more parabolic to the upside than it has recently. And silver could make a straight beeline for the $50 high from 1980 and then up to about $65. Longer term, silver is going to hit at least 100, 125 by 2015, 2016. And silver has plenty of potential that we're going to capitalize on in the next few weeks. Silver is still, mark my words, a very, very dangerous market. And I favor gold over silver. I will get into silver. I will buy silver. I will buy silver shares. But it will be far less than the amount of money I'm willing to commit to the precious metals. Far less will be going to silver than to gold, which is a stronger long-term bull market and less prone to wild swings in volatility than the silver market is. Now, to the dollar. Interestingly, a lot of the reasons why gold and silver and other commodities continue to press higher is, of course, none other than the dollar, which remains weak at the knees, to say the least. The probable reason the dollar remains weak is, of course, the long-term trend, which calls for a lower dollar over the longer term, and shorter term, the very real chance that Washington will have to shut down the government, be it for a day or a week or a month, because of a budget impasse. I would argue that the budget crisis and a shutdown in Washington is really only background noise because what we all know is that the U.S. government is broke, dead broke, and that a shutdown in Washington is, excuse me, pretty much already discounted by these markets. In the short term, it may pound the dollar into a free fall in here down to the 74, 72 level. And that would not be surprising to me because all of the long-term technical and cyclical indicators I follow point lower for the dollar. On the other hand, the dollar remains, as I've expressed to you in previous videos, very oversold and very prone to a bounce. And you're heading into some important meetings in Washington. Again, if the government comes to a standstill for a day or be it a week, that would obviously be perceived as very negative for the dollar, bullish for the precious metals. However, once it's resolved, and I expect it would be within a very short period of time, that could give way to a rally in the dollar and a pullback in precious metals. The short term is always extremely difficult to forecast and trade. That's why I always keep my eye on the intermediate term and long term trends and those continue to point lower for the dollar and higher for the precious metals long term. In this recent period I've merely tried to hedge up gold in the event of a sharp and sudden pullback that was way overdue. That decline in the precious metals did not come. The rally I was expecting in the dollar did not come. 
That means the cycles are inverting and that we're going to see further upside in the metals and further in the downside in the dollar probably immediately. So again, on the dollar, please stay tuned to all of my updates there. Now, the Dow Industrials. Get this chart up for you. Now, the Dow I have been calling for months back uh, starting about November of last year when we first got up to 11,500 I had made a forecast that the Dow was then peaking from a rally I had called from March 16th of 2009 and due cyclically and technically for a healthy pull back to the 9,000 level. That did not happen and it has not happened. I since November warned everybody that the Dow could continue to press higher, first to 12, then to 12.4, then to even 12.8, but a pullback was still likely. That is, we've gotten the push and the climb higher in the Dow, but we have not gotten the pullback. I now believe that the pullback we saw back uh, earlier in January down to 11,555, and uh, earlier in March, I'm sorry, uh, may have been it, and we now could be breaking through to the upside in the Dow that will take it to 13.2, maybe even 13.6 over the next few months. Keep in mind, I am long-term very bullish on the Dow Industrials in particular, also bullish on the S&P 500, less so on the NASDAQ, which, like silver, is probably a little bit overjuiced a little bit more speculative of a market. I believe that the blue chip stocks in the United States and in other countries are headed into a massive new bull market that will result from the declining purchasing power of currencies everywhere. I was one of the first to make this forecast many years ago. I reiterated it in the midst of the crash low in March 2009. I called for a major rally in the Dow. It happened. And now I believe what the Dow's action is telling you is that the next phase of the currency devaluations that are going around the world is here. And the stocks are going to be commoditized and monetized, only the best of them, much, much higher in the years to come. I would not be surprised to see 20 to 22,000 Dow by 2015. 2016, that is my minimum target for the Dow. The Dow could go much higher than that. Now, how am I going to play it in the stock market? I'm going to wait for a little bit of the dust to settle in here. I'm going to lift any hedges that I have, and then I'm going to take on high quality stocks, blue chip type stocks, whether they're in the mining sector, natural resource sector, or technology, and play them from the long side. We are now facing a very critical turn in these markets, a pivot point, if you will, that will set the stage for the next several years to come. And most investors, most analysts won't really know what's happening right now, why it's happening until after the fact. So please stay tuned to all my updates. This is Larry. Have a good weekend.